It's the ability to take these and combine a new form of business models and education and government around collaboration with the power of video. Because until you can look into the other person's eyes, whether you're a doctor doing a diagnosis, which we did the other day over the Internet as a model for what healthcare can be done in this country, or a teacher literally communicating a curriculum to students, the ability to share that teacher across four or five schools in a day as opposed to one teacher trying to do the impossible, teach all the topics to the students. Or the ability literally to have teaching assistants of the future connecting your best teachers. The network is the platform for all forms of communications and directions. And the World Economic Forum got it right. It is this capability that's enabled not just for society change, but for productivity. Productivity of not a 1% or 2% per year, but a 3 to 5% per year, which the developed countries must have to increase their standard of living. But the developing countries actually have the key cards on this. You have a much better hand to play. Your ability to power economic growth, not at a 7 or 8%, but perhaps at a 10% plus. And if you have the productivity, you can do that without inflation in terms of the direction. The ability to hit the inclusiveness. Now, it isn't so important that you look at this and say, well, Cisco, this is how you did it. It's gas in the concept. We outlined 17 years ago, the Internet would change the way the world works, lives, learns, and plays. We said it would be new business models created by it. We said that our differentiated strategy would be about how innovation isn't just about doing it yourself, but acquiring. We've acquired 137 companies, five last quarter alone. In an industry where 90% of acquisitions fail, 70% of ours exceeded what we told our board of directors we'd do. The ability to do internal startups, which most people thought was impossible, and to partner in a unique way with a company such as a Tata, a Reliance, a Wipro, and an Emphasis. The ability to set unreasonable goals of being number one in each product category you go after, minimum of 40% market share, enforce the vision and the differentiated strategy to go with it, and to achieve that in over two dozen product areas. The ability to catch in the next transition, which is around video and collaboration, and then to lead in that as well. But the concept applies to every business, every government, to defense, manufacturing, etc. And it is taking these concepts and then say, how do you carry on the market transitions? It was realization that three years ago, any device to any contact, not just data or voice, but video most important. The ability that collaboration would drive a new generation of productivity. That the emerging markets would not just be a great opportunity to sell to, but the majority of innovation would come out of emerging markets and your ability to scale that globally. That it will be a connected society in ways that probably only our children really grasp in terms of the capability with the ability, instead of it being personalized, to be to communities of interest that you focus on. And the network would enable that. It is your infrastructure in terms of its capability. I spend no time focusing on competition. Purely a way of keeping score. We focus about catching market transitions. Innovation based upon doing it yourself, partnering or acquiring. Catching the transitions that are in front of this country in terms of opportunities and challenges are huge. But it's the ability to say how do you balance those that are the key. We bet our second headquarters here. I moved my number two, Will Melfink, here. We do every function in this country. We will grow the headcount in India at a faster pace than almost anywhere else in the world. But it is the ability to catch these transitions, not betting on a country, but betting on a people and a democracy and the ability to transform. Now, let me walk through how we handle an economic downturn with these type of principles. We saw, unfortunately, starting two and a half years ago, it occurred first in order rates in the financial institutions, then in the large enterprise, then service providers, then basically medium-sized companies, and then the consumer. It's recovering exactly the same way. But during this time, our playbook is always the same. Be realistic on what caused the downturn, how much was self-inflicted. Anticipate how long you think it's going to last, how deep it's going to be. It will always last longer and be deeper. And immediately get ready for the upturn. And use this as a chance to get closer to your customers and your partners. We've gained market share in almost every product category in the last two quarters. Simple game plan. Took a billion five of expenses out. Almost very little headcount. Realigned our priorities. We realigned another billion dollars of resources into new market adjacencies which have zero economic impact in the short run. We positioned ourselves to leading each of these categories. 
and we turned our carrier right into the wind and we launched across the board. Might we be wrong? Of course. Perhaps. Maybe. I don't think so. But if we are, we will adjust. It is that approach to being realistic with the healthy paranoia what can go wrong, but having no fear in terms of what's possible in front of us. The only fear I have is missing market transitions, getting too far away from our customers and partners or our own people. The ability to make these changes, I would argue, on a much larger scale is in front of the country. But it will be zeroed around many of these new technologies. As you do this, at the heart will be video. Our travel budget used to be 730, 750 billion a year. It's 230 billion today. Million. It will never come back. I do 8,000 meetings a week by really in life video conferencing. Our use of those small YouTube type videos, which we used to do externally, we now only do internally. Good growth is 100% growth this year over year. In two years, it's up 8,100%. Faster pace than the first phase of the Internet. And the ability for groups to collaborate together regardless of time frames, what we call WebEx implementation, up 8,100% in two years. When you see this type of takeoff, you suddenly realize that what our children got was right. When you see this type of takeoff, you suddenly realize that what our children got was right. Proof points, market share, huge productivity gains, leadership in almost every product category. This was what was uncomfortable for me. Command and control, I loved it. It's easy to do. We're very effective at it. And we move as one company with one vision. But in 2001, we tripped hard. We went from the most valuable company in the world to people second-guessing us about could we even recover? Would we even survive? And the challenges were fair. But I made the mistake of only doing one or two major priorities a year. I only had five markets that might be a billion-dollar markets, new ones for us, and we were at a run rate of over $30 billion, and they were four to five years out. This time we went into a slowdown with $30 billion in cash, 30 new market adjacencies, and pretty lean. And it's the ability to move the organization from command to control slowly through a period of six or seven years to empowerment and teamwork. You know what the most difficult part of this is? Me. What's the most difficult transition to change in India? You. It's the leadership. But it's the ability to move beyond the short term. What are we going to do for this election? What are we going to do one to two years out? To paint the picture of what's possible 10, 20 years out. And then to explode it back in terms of these new transitions, both in organization models, use of the Internet, and video. Do I expect you to agree with everything I said? No. But we're uniquely positioned to see what's occurring everywhere in the world. It is the ability... Next slide, please. I need to point at this side. Or this side. <laughs> you know, the first presentation I gave here five years ago, we have it backed up completely. The electricity went down, my PCs dropped, I had my backup PCs. The second group of PCs went down, I had an overhead projector. I put the flips, uh, slides up on the overhead projector, it went down, I finished my presentation underneath an emergency light in the middle. No one ever remembered what I said other than I didn't get disrupted throughout. What you just saw is a technique called distracting away while somebody go fix it and then we come through. But when you talk about our commitment to India, we have every function here, 6,000 people on our way to be in 10,000. I believe we have our best partnering alliances here with the companies I mentioned earlier and others to go on a global scale. So while the internal market's important to us, we're really after how we partner to go globally on it. The ability to get social sustainability, economic, and environmentally friendly approach, I think we can do together. And create markets not just for this country, but globally. We're far from perfect. But we give back in a very large way. And when we do it, we do it operationally extremely well. Whether it basically was the issues with Katrina in the U.S., where over a period of seven years we trained 70,000 students in a new program, spent $90 million, conflict in Lebanon, the earthquake in China, the flooding that occurred in your country, our network academies, 
We have over 900,000 students in them in 165 countries around the world where the average student who graduates get 50% more, training them for where the jobs are in the future. In India today, we have over 160 of academies. We have 17,000 students in the programs. It's training our young people for where the jobs are. But it's using this to say, how do you perhaps go the next step? How do you take what Kamel not earlier talked about, the ability within his state to create young people and empower them? And when you empower them, it's amazing with creativity and ideas they come up with. How you take the terrible flooding challenges that occurred and all of a sudden in areas like uh, uh, Rachur, the ability not only to build out 3,580 new homes and to do two new schools and a new hospital, but how do you do that for the future using these technologies we've talked about and watch the progress and develop it all through video? It's the ability to suddenly think about how you respond so well during a disaster to say, how do we plan to prevent them in the future? How do we basically take the power that we just talked about and look about a community with the most motivated young people in the world and say, how do we not only meet those expectations, but how do we exceed them? How do we take this community capability and think what most people would say would be impossible? Sunil Bhattar Mattel said, John, when you think about India five years ago, he said, you've got to think different price points and different economic models. And I didn't understand at first what he meant. Dr. Kalam, who's one of the nicest, smartest men I've ever met in my life, he said, John, when you think about India, you're thinking thousands. You need to think millions. If you think about that scale, I think with the power of the Internet, it is within our grasp to do what everyone would say would be almost impossible. For one dollar per month for students, enable every student in India to have a competitive education. Not by doing it like developed countries have done. Skip a generation, deliver it virtually. Get people trained to manage the class with video there. You put video in a class, people behave, including the executives. That was a little bit of humor in case you missed it. But the ability to do the same thing for a doctor's appointment, where you combine people like Apollo in terms of the ability to dream and say, how do you deliver this remotely to every citizen for perhaps one dollar per visit? And the ability to have, quote, a call center of doctors suddenly doing this in mass, where you get the doctor who has a spatially in brain tumors or has a spatially in a given cancer or has a spatially in infectious diseases, and you automatically bring the patient straight to that. And you capture the data, how? By video. And you let the patients look back, how? By video. A million jobs. I think that is a small number if this transition is done right. And we didn't even talk about safety and security that is powered off this type of network. Our goal, very simply, is to say, how do you deliver this architecturally? Technology-wise, it's kind of cool to me. The flip, I think you get. The telepresence you get. We announced a new big router this Monday. Six years ago, we announced a router that could do a billion phone calls. And just like when IBM announced the first mainframe, people said, you might need seven to ten of them, maybe two or three accounts for buy Well, we announced a billion phone call capability Six years ago, people said you might sell a dozen of them, maybe to six or seven accounts. We sold 5,000 of them to 300 accounts. What we announced on Monday was the capability for every man, woman, and child in India to do a simultaneous video conferencing capability. And my prediction is, with all the appropriate caveats, you'll see the same type of uptake. The future is about video and collaboration. We're honored to partner with this country. We are old-fashioned. We partner for life. Tim, we're not perfect, and we know it. But we are a company that knows how to dream and make dreams come true. If you will have us, we want to be your partner for life. And part of our job as a partner is to really challenge you because we get to see what everyone in the world is doing and we'll never ask you to do something we haven't already done ourselves. Thank you very much.